The question of how water came to be on Earth is a captivating topic that has puzzled scientists for years. From comets to volcanic activity and even extraterrestrial sources, theories have been proposed but none have been conclusively proven. The presence of water is crucial for the development and sustenance of life on Earth, making the question of its origin even more intriguing. Imagine a world without water. No oceans, no rivers, no lakes, and no rain. Now, think about the fact that our planet is covered in water, 70% of it to be exact. How did all this water come to be here? Was it always here, or did it arrive later in Earth's history? And if it did arrive later, where did it come from? These are the questions we're going to answer. Let's dive into the world of comets, icy planetesimals, and the depths of Earth's interior. We'll explore the various theories that have been proposed and the evidence that supports them. We'll also examine the ongoing research and new discoveries that are shedding light on this captivating topic. So come along for the ride and let's unravel the mystery of water on Earth together. Unraveling the mystery of when water first graced our planet is a fascinating and complex endeavor. The Earth's water cycle is a never-ending process, constantly being lost to space. This is because H2O molecules in the atmosphere can be broken down by photolysis, and the resulting free hydrogen atoms can sometimes escape the planet's gravitational pull. This process would have been even more pronounced in the past, when the Earth was younger and less massive, as lighter elements like hydrogen and helium are expected to leak from the atmosphere continually. However, Isotopic ratios of heavier noble gases in the modern atmosphere suggest that even the heavier elements in the early atmosphere were subject to significant losses. One of the most powerful tools for understanding this process is the study of xenon, a noble gas that does not react chemically with other elements. By comparing the abundances of its nine stable isotopes in the modern atmosphere, scientists can deduce that the Earth lost at least one ocean of water early in its history, between the Hadean and Archean eras. This information helps us to get a more comprehensive picture of when water first appeared on our planet and how it has evolved. It is believed that any water that may have existed on Earth during the latter stages of its accretion would have been disrupted by the massive impact that formed the Moon around 4.5 billion years ago. This impact likely vaporized much of the Earth's crust and upper mantle, creating a hot, rock-vapor atmosphere around the young planet. This vapor would have cooled and condensed within thousands of years, leaving behind hot volatiles that likely resulted in an atmosphere composed mainly of carbon dioxide, with traces of hydrogen and water vapor. Despite the extremely high surface temperatures of around 230 degrees Celsius, liquid water oceans may have existed due to the increased atmospheric pressure created by the high levels of CO2. As the planet cooled, most of the CO2 was removed from the atmosphere through processes such as subduction and dissolution in ocean water. However, the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere would have continued to fluctuate wildly as new surface and mantle cycles occurred. This process of cooling and carbon dioxide removal would have played a crucial role in shaping the Earth's early climate and making it hospitable for life as we know it. Geological evidence also supports the idea that liquid water existed on Earth in the distant past. For example, scientists have recovered samples of pillow basalt, a type of rock that forms during underwater volcanic eruptions, from the Issua Greenstone Belt. These samples prove that water existed on Earth as far back as 3.8 billion years ago. Similarly, rocks from the Nouvagtuk Greenstone Belt in Quebec, Canada, dated to be around 3.8 billion years old and 4.28 billion years old, also contain evidence of the presence of water at these ancient times. It is possible that oceans existed on Earth even earlier than this, but if so, any geological evidence of this has yet to be discovered, potentially due to the fact that it has been destroyed by geological processes such as crustal recycling. Recently, in August 2020, researchers reported that sufficient water to fill the oceans may have been on the Earth since the planet's formation. The idea is that water-rich materials were present when Earth was formed, which helped to create oceans. Unlike the rugged rocks of the Earth, zircons are precious gems that have stood the test of time, weathering the eons with ease. 
These ancient minerals hold a wealth of information about Earth's early days, revealing that liquid water and an atmosphere were present as early as 4.404 billion years and 0.008 billion years ago, shortly after the planet's formation. However, this discovery seems to contradict the cool early Earth theory, which posits that temperatures were too low for liquid water between 4.4 and 4.0 billion years ago. Further research on zircons found in Australian Hadean rocks paints a different picture, suggesting that plate tectonics were active as early as 4 billion years ago. This theory suggests that the early Earth was not the hot, molten wasteland one might expect, but rather a world much like our own, with tectonics trapping vast amounts of CO2, reducing greenhouse effects, and leading to a cooler surface temperature, solid rock, and liquid water. The vast expanse of the oceans may seem like they make up the bulk of our planet, but in reality, they are just a drop in the bucket. The total mass of the oceans is a mere 0.023% of Earth's total mass, with additional water found in ice, lakes, rivers, and even in the air we breathe. But the water on the surface is just the tip of the iceberg. Deep within the Earth, water is stored in the crust, mantle, and core in form of hydrated minerals and trace amounts of hydrogen bonded to oxygen atoms. Tectonic activity even transports water into the mantle, where it is estimated that three times the mass of the oceans could be stored. And who knows, the Earth's core is holding on to four to five oceans worth of hydrogen. Unlike other materials that make up the terrestrial planets in our solar system, such as iron and silicates, water has much lower condensation temperature. In the early days of the solar system, the region closest to the sun was sweltering, making it impossible for ocean water to form on Earth. But as you ventured further from the young sun, where temperatures were cooler, water was able to condense and form icy planetesimals. This boundary of the region where ice could form is known as the frost line or snow line, and it's located in the modern asteroid belt between 2.7 and 3.1 astronomical units from the sun. This means that for water to be present on Earth, it had to have been delivered by objects that formed beyond the frost line, such as comets, trans-Neptunian objects, and water-rich meteoroids. But the timing of this delivery is still a mystery. It is believed by some scientists that the Earth, around 4.5 billion years ago, gradually formed and grew through the accumulation of icy planetesimals. This theory posits that the Earth was about 60 to 90 percent of its current size during this process. This hypothesis is supported by the similarities in the abundance and isotope ratios of water found in the oldest known carbonaceous chondrite meteorites and meteorites from Vesta, both of which have origins in the solar system's asteroid belt. Additionally, studies of osmium isotope ratios suggest that a significant amount of water was present in the material that Earth accreted during its early formation. Furthermore, measurements of the chemical composition of lunar samples collected by the Apollo 15 and 17 missions also support this theory. They indicate that water was present on Earth before the formation of the Moon. While this hypothesis has some supporting evidence, there is also a significant problem. Precisely, the noble gas isotope ratios of Earth's atmosphere do not match those of its mantle, which suggests that they were formed from different sources. A theory called the late veneer has been proposed to reconcile this discrepancy. It posits that water was delivered to Earth much later in its history, following the impact event that formed the Moon. However, Based on current understanding of Earth's formation, less than 1% of Earth's material is believed to have accreted after the Moon formed. This implies that any material accreted later must have been highly water-rich. Studies of early solar system dynamics suggest that icy asteroids could have been delivered to the inner solar system, including Earth if Jupiter had migrated closer to the Sun during this period. Another hypothesis, supported by evidence from the molybdenum isotope ratios, suggests that Earth gained most of its water from the same interplanetary collision that resulted in the formation of the Moon. Recent evidence from 2019 indicates that the molybdenum isotope composition of Earth's mantle originates from the outer solar system and likely brought water to Earth. 
The proposed explanation is that Thea, the hypothetical planet believed to have collided with Earth 4.5 billion years ago and caused the formation of the Moon, may have originated in the outer solar system rather than the inner solar system, and thus carried water and carbon-based materials with it. In 2021, scientists made an exciting discovery by examining samples collected from an asteroid. The models had an unusually high level of light hydrogen, raising questions about its origin. To confirm their suspicions, the scientists conducted an experiment where they measured the hydrogen and water content of olivine crystals before and after exposing them to the equivalent of solar wind. After the investigation, they found that the crystals had a crust of accumulated water built with light hydrogen. This led to the realization that the yellow water came from the sun. Solar winds from the sun shoot out a lot of particles, including protons which can steal electrons from dust and form light hydrogen. When this light hydrogen is combined with oxygen, it creates soft water. The process can also happen in space dust and meteorites that eventually fall to Earth and add soft water to our magma ocean, trapped in the rocks that form our mantle over time. The ratio of deuterium to hydrogen in ocean water on Earth is crucial in understanding the origins of water on our planet. This ratio, 1.5576 plus or minus 0.005 times 10 to the negative fourth, is a combination of all the sources that have contributed to Earth's water reservoirs. Scientists believe that this ratio may have increased over time due to the lighter isotope of hydrogen escaping into space through atmospheric processes. However, no known process can decrease the ratio. The mystery of how water came to Earth is an intriguing and captivating topic that continues to be studied by scientists. The presence of water is crucial to the development and sustenance of life on Earth, making the question of its origins even more fascinating. Further research and discoveries in this field may hold the key to understanding the origins of not only water on Earth, but possibly even the origins of life itself. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative we strive to provide valuable content that is both engaging and educational. We would greatly appreciate it if you could take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. This will help us continue to create and share more content like this in the future. Please feel free to leave a comment and let us know what other topics you would like us to cover. Your feedback is important to us and we want to make sure that we are providing you with the content that you are interested in. Thank you for watching 